Hey everyone, I'm Mickey. Welcome back to Lace Up Solutions, your number one DSD software. Today, I'm going to tell you the effects of credits on your gross profit margins. Most of my wholesale distributors aren't even worried about credits, yet when I look at their finances and when I look at their reporting, I see a tremendous amount of credits that they're creating because they're giving too much product to customers and that product is either going bad or it's getting stale or maybe somebody's ripping the package. Either way, too much product is being given to the customer. So for example, I've got a tortilla company, a tortilla company so big, right, that it's generating millions and millions and millions of dollars in revenue. That being said, their credit rates were way over 25%. Think about that. 25% of their gross profits were going down the drain in credits. So anyways, let me tell you what the effect is on a company like that when your credits are so high. So let's get right into it. Right here on the board, you're going to see a couple components. All right. Right here, I've got the different values that are going to be affected by the sale and by the credit. Okay. So this is before the credit. So this is what the accounting looks like when we make the invoice and when we make the sale. And we've got the credit itself. This is what the accounting looks like when that credit gets made. And lastly, we have a net total down here, all right? So anyways, let's get into the calculations. Let's say, for example, that we sell five tortillas to Johnny Supermarket. So the tortilla is $5, okay? If I sell five of these tortillas, what is my total sale? Well, obviously it's $25, which you can see right here. So before the credit, I sold $25, okay? Now, what is the cost of goods sold of those tortillas? So the cost of goods sold is very simple to calculate. Cost of goods sold is the, to the cost of each unit sold times the quantity sold. So the cost of each unit sold is $2, and the quantity sold is five, so the cost of goods sold is $10. So what is the gross profit, do you ask yourself? The gross profit is $15 on this sale, all right? Now, what happens to the inventory? When we get to the inventory side, what's gonna happen is the inventory is gonna decrease by five. So if I started with 20 on hand, I decrease five, my current inventory in the accounting system is 15, okay? And my inventory value, remember, inventory value is the value of the inventory on hand, which is the Quantity on hand remaining, which is 15, times the cost, $2, gives you $30 value. All right? So that's the effect of the sale on your accounting and on your inventory. So now, let's say that you visit the customer one week later, and the customer's got two stale tortillas that you have to pick up because you left too many tortillas for them. So here's what happens when that tortilla gets recorded. Okay? So... Post credit, all right, here's what happens to the sales. So the sales are subtracted by $10. So whereas you sold $25, you subtract $10 because of the credit, and your actual sales now are $15. Now let's go over here to the cost of goods sold. Your cost of goods sold initially were $10 that you sold, but you credited $4, all right? So your cost of goods sold in total is now $6. Okay. So whereas before your gross profit was $15, check this out, your gross profit, 15 minus six, is now $9. So you've killed your gross profit, right? By how much? Think about that, right? You've killed it by $6 just with those credits. Now let's keep going. Here's what happens to inventory with the credit. And here's why credits are so bad. Most accounting systems recognize a credit as a return of product back to inventory. So initially, what a credit does to your inventory is it increases it. But if you recall, I told you that the two tortillas that we picked up were stale. They weren't, uh, they weren't good tortillas coming back into inventory. But nonetheless, the system adds the two tortillas to my inventory. So now my inventory is screwed up. Whereas my inventory should be 15, it's now showing 17, and the asset value is incorrect. It should be $30, but now it's showing $34. So think about that. The credit not only decreased my gross profits, but it also increased my inventory, even though the products were stale. But let's say that I'm a savvy accountant. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust those two out of inventory, 
okay, with a cycle count or an adjustment. All right, and what that's doing is it's gonna bring my inventory level and my asset value back to the right levels. But let's talk about the result of this credit. If you look here again, we now have $9 of gross profit, whereas up here we had 15, that's $6 different. Not only that, but we no longer have the inventory to sell. So you lost the inventory and you lost your $6 of gross profit just on this sale. Think about how that's gonna kill your profit margins, right? Your profit margins just went to nine over 15, okay? Which is, if my math is right, something like, I don't know, 45%. And if you look up here, right? Look how much higher the profit margin was. It's 15 over 25, right? That's 60%. So think about that. You've just destroyed your gross profit margins just because of this credit. So what I recommend is that you find any way to decrease credits. Credits should not be up at 20 and 30%. Credits should be anywhere between 3% and 7%. Okay, I've even seen some customers with the right strategy that have gotten the credits down all the way to 1%. Anyways, that is why minimizing your credits are so important. Now, if you have any questions, please hit me in the comments below. My goal is to provide as much content to wholesale food and beverage distributors to help you help your business. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Anything that you do for us really helps us and motivates us to continue making this type of content for you. Other than that, I hope you have a great day. Take care.